Blue Origin successfully completed its second human space flight on board a New Shepard launch vehicle on October 13. The reusable New Shepard rocket and capsule lifted off from Blue Origin's launch site 1 on Wednesday. The flight included four passengers. And here they go. There is Glenn DeVries. Chris Bosshausen, William Shatner, and Audrey Powers. Shatner is not paying for his seat, while Bo Shason and DeVries paid undisclosed amounts for their seats on New Shepard. During the flight, the vehicle reached an estimated peak altitude of 107 kilometers, 7 kilometers higher than the widely recognized boundary of space. After a 10 minutes 17 seconds flight, during which the crew experienced about 4 minutes of weightlessness in outer space, the capsule safely delivered the crew back to Earth with a parachute-assisted landing near Blue Origin's West Texas facilities. The rocket, which separated from the capsule, after lofting the crew to space, successfully executed an upright landing about 7 minutes after liftoff, touching down just 3 kilometers north of the launch pad. At 90, Shatner is now the oldest person to have ever flown to space, beating the record set by the 82-year-old aviation pioneer Wally Funk, who flew on Blue Origin's first crewed flight on July 20. Shatner was exuberant after his flight, offering a long description of his experience to Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos during the company's webcast. Uh, I'm so filled with emotion about what just happened. I uh, just, it's extraordinary, extraordinary. The flight was the fifth New Shepard flight this year, including three payload-only flights. The next New Shepard flight is projected for December, and that might be the first mission to carry six people, the full crew complement of New Shepard. Let's discuss some of the recent updates from NASA. NASA's newest asteroid probe, named Lucy, blasted off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida atop an Atlas V rocket on Saturday to embark on a 12-year mission to study two different clusters of asteroids around Jupiter, known as Trojans. Almost an hour after liftoff, the spacecraft successfully separated from the launch vehicle's upper stage. And just under two hours after launch, NASA confirmed Lucy's solar arrays had deployed, and they received a signal from the spacecraft confirming it is safe and healthy. The spacecraft is set to fly by an asteroid in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and then it will explore seven of the Trojan asteroids. Check out our previous video to learn about this historic mission in detail. Link in the description. The last piece of Space Launch System rocket hardware was added to the stack at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. On October 9, the Orion stage adapter was connected to the top of the interim cryogenic propulsion stage that provides the power to send Orion to the moon. The Orion stage adapter connects the Orion spacecraft to the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, which was built by Boeing and United Launch Alliance. The stage adapter houses 10 CubeSat rideshare payloads heading into deep space on the Artemis 1 mission. As Orion heads to the moon for its mission, the interim cryogenic propulsion stage will separate from Orion and deploy the CubeSats. These CubeSats have their own propulsion systems to take them on missions to the moon and other destinations in deep space. The interim cryogenic propulsion stage and Orion stage adapter will only be used for the first three Artemis missions. The exploration upper stage, a more powerful stage with four RL-10 engines, will be used on future Artemis missions. The Orion spacecraft, NASA's human-rated moon ship, will be added to the rocket in the coming days to complete the buildup of the 98-meter tall launch vehicle for an unpiloted test flight the lunar orbit and back to Earth. NASA has not announced a target launch date for the mission, but it is expected to fly sometime in early 2022. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope packed in a 30 meters long container with additional equipment successfully arrived in French Guiana on October 12 after a 16-day journey at sea. The 9,300 kilometers voyage took Webb from California through the Panama Canal to port to Paria Cabo in French Guiana on the northeastern coast of South America. The world's largest and most complex space science observatory was then transported to its launch site, Europe's spaceport in Kauru, where it will begin two months of operational preparations before its launch on an Ariane 5 rocket, scheduled for December 18. Once operational, Webb will reveal insights about all phases of cosmic history and will help search for signs of potential habitability among the thousands of exoplanets scientists have discovered in recent years. The mission is an international collaboration led by NASA in partnership with the European and Canadian space agencies. Small satellite launcher Astra says it has identified the culprit behind its bizarre launch failure in August, which saw the company's rocket hover sideways after takeoff before briefly soaring into the sky. 
According to Astra, during the launch attempt, propellants leaked from the propellant distribution system, mixed, and became trapped in an enclosed space beneath the interface between the rocket and the launcher. Those propellants were ignited by the engine exhaust, causing an overpressure event that severed the connection to the electronics that controlled the fuel pump, shutting down the engine less than one second after liftoff. Astra had not encountered this problem before, and the company has already taken steps to reduce the odds that it will happen again. For example, Astra has tweaked the design of its rocket launcher interfaces so that propellants will not mix, even if they leak. On top of that, they have modified and requalified the propellant supply mechanism to minimize fuel leakage and improved verification processes for both design and operations. Those changes have been implemented on the company's next rocket, LV-0007, scheduled to lift off from the Pacific Spaceport Complex during a window that runs from October 27 to 31. China on Friday launched a rocket carrying three astronauts to the Tianhe core module of the Jiangong Space Station. A Long March 2F rocket carrying the Shenzhou-13 spacecraft blasted off from Jiaquin Satellite Launch Center on October 15, carrying Commander Zhai Zhigang and colleagues Wang Yaping and Yi Guangfu on board. The flight marked the second of four crewed missions scheduled to dock with the Jiangong Space Station by the end of construction in 2022. During the first crewed mission, that concluded in September, three other astronauts stayed on the station for 90 days. Six hours and 30 minutes after liftoff, the Shenzhou-13 vessel carrying the three astronauts docked with the radial port of the space station. Three hours later, the astronauts opened the hatch and entered the space station's core module. During their six-month stay on board the station, the astronauts will carry out tests of the key technologies and robotics on Tianhe, verify on-board life support systems, and conduct a host of scientific experiments. For example, the Shenzhou-13 crew will move the robotic Tianzhu-2 cargo spacecraft from one docking port to another, using the module's robotic arm. The crew will also conduct two or three spacewalks during the mission. The astronauts are expected to return to Earth in April 2022. On October 14, China launched its Long March 2D rocket from Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center, carrying the Chinese H-Alpha Solar Explorer and 10 other satellites into orbit during its 37th orbital launch of the year. The 508-kilogram chase is the country's first solar observatory equipped with a solar telescope that will observe the deep red H-alpha line of the solar spectrum to help scientists study solar flares. Chase will study solar activity and provide critical data for space weather forecasting, including observing filaments prior to eruptions of solar flares and coronal mass ejections. The mission has a design lifetime of three years and is planned to make observations up to the upcoming 2025 solar maximum. China is planning to follow Chase with the launch of the Advanced Space-Based Solar Observatory in 2022. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. SpaceX is working around the clock to prepare Starship 20 and Booster 4 for its maiden orbital flight from the Starbase facility in South Texas. Hours after a Raptor vacuum engine and a sea-level engine were delivered to the launch site, SpaceX employees installed the vacuum variant of the engine into Ship 20 on October 11. It's unclear how many engines will be installed on Ship 20 or how many will be ignited during its first static fire test, but unless more Raptors are delivered, all indicators point to an initial test of two engines, one sea level optimized and one vacuum optimized. Whenever Ship 20 does fire up those engines, it will be the first static fire of a vacuum optimized engine installed on a Starship, as well as the first simultaneous static fire of two distinct Raptor variants. At the moment, SpaceX has three possible static fire test windows scheduled for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, from 5 p.m. to midnight. Similar test windows were cancelled last week, suggesting that more cancellations are probably on the horizon. An intermittent closure is scheduled on Monday morning seemingly for GSE tank cryo-shell rollout. Starship 20 went through an ambient pressure test on October 14, where the propellant tanks were filled with gaseous nitrogen at ambient temperatures to check for leaks. This was the second ambient pressure test of Ship 20 after the first test conducted on September 27. Meanwhile, for some unknown reasons, SpaceX removed some of the already installed Raptor engines from Booster 4. Out of the five Raptor engines removed from the booster, three were taken back to the build site for inspections. Work is in progress to assemble and install the pair of giant arms designed to lift, stack, and even catch Starships and super heavy boosters out of mid-air. The first catching arm was attached to the carriage on October 9, and the second catching arm was lifted and connected to the carriage on October 11. 
With both the 36 meters long catching arms connected and secured on the carriage, SpaceX is now working on some minor carriage outfitting tasks before eventually installing the assembled carriage and arms structure onto the launch tower. SpaceX also needs to install 12 guide blocks on the tower that will allow the carriage and arms to slide up and down the tracks. Unfortunately, one of such guide blocks fell off from the tower during installation. Musk mentioned in his tweet that a backup guide block is on its way to the launch site. Recently a huge roll of steel cables was installed on a platform at the base of the launch tower. The cable is part of the draw works mechanism that will lift the catching arm up and down the launch tower. As Starship 20 and Super Heavy Booster 4 are undergoing pre-flight testing at the launch site, SpaceX is already manufacturing the next orbital launch vehicle, Starship 21 and Booster 5 at the build site. Thermal protection tile installation works on the nose cone of Ship 21 is nearing completion. Construction of all the stainless steel sections of Ship 21 has been completed, and stacking operations have already begun inside the mid-bay. Teams are also working on Booster 5's assembly. Assembly work on the methane tank and the oxygen tank of the booster is nearing completion, and last week engineers installed four giant grid fins on the massive rocket. Recently NASA's Langley Research Center announced that they would collaborate with SpaceX to monitor the upcoming orbital Starship flight test. NASA's scientifically calibrated in-flight imagery team plans to conduct a Starship re-entry observation during the test flight, during which the agency will monitor the stainless steel spacecraft's heat shield as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere. As it descends from space at hypersonic speeds, Starship will face severe heat of over 1600 degrees Celsius. The windward side of the vehicle is covered with hexagonal ceramic heat shield tiles, which protect it from the scorching temperatures encountered at atmospheric re-entry. According to NASA, a high-resolution observation using calibrated infrared cameras will be used to monitor the surface temperature of the entire lower surface of the Starship spacecraft during hypersonic re-entry. To perform this thermal observation, NASA is developing an advanced multispectral imaging system that will be flown on a NASA high-altitude WB-57F research aircraft. The resulting calibrated measurements will inform modeling efforts and anchor surface temperatures inferred from embedded thermocouples. The imaging system is sponsored by NASA's Artemis program, and its fabrication is nearing completion. NASA Langley says that a validated design using flight data would have a dramatic impact on the commercial space economy by offering a lower marginal launch cost per kilogram to low Earth orbit. They concluded that the rapid reusability of the entire Starship launch system, including its heat shield technology, is critical for achieving a lower marginal launch cost. Thus, this partnership with NASA will allow SpaceX to enable the first ever fully reusable orbital launch and entry vehicle. The document reveals that they target to conduct Starship re-entry observation no earlier than March 2022. This week, the Federal Aviation Administration will hold a public hearing via Zoom on the draft programmatic environmental assessment for the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy Launch Vehicle Program. During the public hearing event scheduled for October 18 and 20, Interested agencies, organizations, Native American tribes, and members of the public will submit comments on all aspects of the draft programmatic environmental assessment released in September. The FAA will provide a project overview in English and Spanish during the hearing. Afterwards, members of the public can provide oral comments. If the FAA determines environmental impacts of the proposed project would be significant and those impacts could not be properly mitigated to less than significant levels, the agency would conduct a more intensive review. SpaceX cannot launch the Starship and Super Heavy vehicle until the FAA completes its environmental review and licensing process. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.